If you're looking for live local music in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, you came to the right place. Welcome to Hughes Shows. We're all at the Hughes Show. It's a lot of fun. He's got all the answers. Yeah, he's got them. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm your host, Hugh Twyman, and I've been writing a music and photography blog in Pittsburgh for over a decade. Check me out at HughShows.com and follow me on Twitter at HughShows and Facebook. Tonight, my special guest is Mayor Bill Peduto, and he will be discussing his musical tastes with a segment I call First Last. But first, my musical guest is meeting of important people. They are an indie pop rock trio who play the loud parts loud and the pretty parts pretty. We're going to get some pretty from the guys as they are performing acoustic style with their debut single from their 2008 self-titled first to release. Please welcome Meeting of Important People with Mothers Pay More. Thank you. 
I'm here with meeting of important people who just performed Mothers Pay More. Now, that was the first song we've ever heard from you guys? That was, that was like our first single, single. In, in the summer of 2008. It was on a compilation, really cool local compilation. Key Party. Key Party yeah, compilation. Yeah, right on. So it was the first song that we recorded as band. So uh, you hadn't recorded the album. You just recorded that song, basically. It ended up being on the album, but it was the first. We actually rushed it. We um, A great guy named Greg Dutton, anybody who was a... Ohio. Yeah, to me, he's like a great friend and like a mythic uh, yeah. Pittsburgh music guy. He put together a compilation uh, for the New American Music Festival, which was happening in Pittsburgh. The idea was that a bunch of local bands would hand out this sampler to people that were coming in from all over the eastern United States at this festival. And so I think we only had a couple days to put the track together, and we just really started playing as a band. It was a song that I'd written maybe a year prior, two years even, and we, uh, we did it really fast, and it mm -hmm. was our, technically our first release. So it actually took only a couple days? To like really get it together? We did it in one one take, I think. Wow. It was one of those like, hey, yeah. hey, let's just sound check, see if everything turns out okay. And then when, by the time we were done, I think Josh was like, that's, yeah. We got to yeah. take. Almost like yeah. what we did here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you listen to the recording, we, we, we didn't did, know how to end it. We did, even. Yeah, the ending, it yeah, the ending was kind of truncated. So I, I'd like to introduce the band. We have Josh for Bandits on a guitar and vocal. We have Mr. Matt Miller on drums and vocal, and Mr. Aaron Bubenheim on bass and vocals. So Aaron, uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, you've been together for 2008, mm -hmm. correct? And since then you've all gotten married, mm -hmm. uh, two of you have started families. How has that changed the band? Um, I mean, question. we've had to <clears throat> change the way we do business. I mean, we've had to adapt and make it something that we can do long term. Right. We've had to realize that we can't go 100 miles an hour until we're burned out. We have With to, no regard. Yeah, we have to try to make a plan and sit down and say, okay, how many days a week are we going to be able to practice? And in the beginning, you didn't have that concern. Yeah, it was just we're all holding our breath trying to like get a break. You know? mm -hmm. And so we realized we have to figure out ways to make it work. And so in terms of knowing that responsibility now, how has it changed the band at all, do you think? Well, it's probably improved us, to be perfectly honest. When we started the band, you're in your mid-20s, and the only thing you can think about is I want to walk in my door and start playing music immediately. It's the only thing. So we, right. we every, everybody's band when you're in your early or mid twenties, you're playing four nights a week or five nights a week. But for us, a lot of the like swagger and the feel that we have, I think th that's good about our band, didn't really come till later when we kind of took a breath. Um, not to mention a lot of our live performances now, we we try to make them more like events. We don't play as often as we used to, uh -huh. but it helps us be able to focus on events and try to make them special experiences for, for the audience instead of just another bar show next week, another bar show next week. And in week. doing that, it's special for you, I'm assuming. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely. You know what I mean? Seven. You guys were in Ohio, yeah. and so that was 2006. Six. Six. Yeah. So Seven. you did you didn't decide to make meeting of important people in uh, for two years. Right. But you were, it was germinating to... Yeah, you know what I mean. It was meeting of important people. I'd I would make up demos. I was in Ohio, and I, we were all very happy. And Greg Dutton was the main songwriter in that band. And just kind of for fun, I would make up a song. And little by little, we would introduce those into Ohio sets. I think we did a couple songs that ended up being right. Moip songs as Ohio, and just organically, it did start yeah. to split a little bit where. Um, people seem to be interested in meeting of important people as a band. And for a while, we, we really did try to do both mm -hmm. for maybe a year and had the time of our lives doing it. And then eventually did get to be a little more serious about Moip and stop playing in Ohio. And this guy was tagged along and... Well, he, well, he has his own, was like he his own amazing band. You know? I was yeah. just a fanboy, that's all. Yeah. <clears throat> So uh, tell me about the new album. This is 2015 right now. In 2016, what are we looking forward to? We are going to put out our third full album, which I don't think we really have a title yet. Um, and hopefully the release will be, I'm not sure when this is airing, Jan late January or late February of 2016. Okay. We'll do like a winter release for the record. It's, um, it's kind of like, uh, you mentioned ZZ Top. It's like our, like, uh, like 30, Amigos. like 38, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a, it's, it's it, everybody says this, but it's totally different from anything we've ever done. About half of the songs we've had now for two or three years since the last album. So a lot of people in town um, know them already, songs that, that we haven't recorded yet that we've been playing live. 
and the other half of the album we're just finishing now. It's a really peak and valley dynamic. Um, like loud parts loud, parts <laughs> Yeah, that kind of thing, definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. A lot of twists and turns, for sure. Can't wait to hear it, and I thank you guys so much for being yes, here. You. This, this means so thank much you. to me, and uh, we're going to play another song, and we're going to probably fade into that. Let's do it. We'd love to. Our Thanks, pleasure guys. being here. Yeah. Thank so you. Much. Right on. Now performing a song from their 2012 second album entitled, My Ears Are Having a Heart Attack. Please welcome once again, Meeting of Important People with Got a Clean Head. joined by the mayor of Pittsburgh, Mr. William Peduto. Thank you. How are you, man? I'm great. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. What do you think of the meeting of important people? Good job, guys. Yeah, hey, guys. Hey. Right on. You're, you've been a fan for them, of them for how long? Boy. 2008 they formed, so. Yeah, but before that, they, Josh was in Ohio right. with Greg Dutton, Eric Sorelli in the band, and that's where I got to meet them. And um, really, from the very beginning, Eric was a fraternity brother of mine at Penn State. Wow. I rushed him to my fraternity. Wow, okay. And I've been a big fan of every band he's been a part of since then. Out of the Blue, um, Soda Jerk, which Soda was Jerk, Soda right? Jerk was my house band in 2001. Wow. Yeah, the only cow punk house band in a political campaign. And, and, that, and that's why I invited you here tonight, because I've seen you out 
at shows all the time, and I know you're a fan of rock and roll. Yeah, since I, I mean, I had three older brothers, so I had the influence of uh, my oldest brother, Guy, who was listening to Mott the Hoople and T-Rex and stuff like that. Dave was more into Dylan. Tom was into Bowie. So I, I had, and I unfortunately destroyed so many of their albums right. as a kid growing yeah. up as a little brother. Yeah, right. I think I did for my brothers, too. I hope he's not watching, but, you know, how many... <laughs> <laughs> we won't get into we'll it. Send it to him. Yeah. So this is a segment I like to call first last, and first last is uh, just getting your musical influences. So it's pretty painless, no geopolitical uh, mm -hmm. economic stuff. So let's have some fun. Okay. Uh, the first album that you ever bought. Well, that would have been through my brother Tom when I had my tonsils out when I was seven years old. 1970-71 era, and it would have been Meet the Monkeys. Meet the Monkeys. Yeah, he actually bought Meet the Monkeys, Monkeys Headquarters, and. One other Monkees album at a garage sale our neighbors had, and um, th that I still have those all three of those albums. And the Monkees weren't a joke; they were like kind of a joke, but they they were almost they sold so many albums in the sixties. Well, if you're seven years old, yeah, they're yeah, like, right. They're the real thing. So right. I was kind of I was excited to have my own album. Yeah, uh, number one, but I love the Monkees, and he knew that. Yeah, yeah, the Monkees are great. How about uh, the last album you bought? Um, I recently bought on Amazon, and recently is a few months back, um, both The Muffs and uh, Mazzy Star came out with new releases this past year. So I bought both of those. And um, they have the verdict on those? Uh, the Muffs still, I mean, they still rock, and I still love them. And Mazzy Star. Um, kind of, I, I haven't heard anything from the new yeah. album, so it kind of came and went. Yeah, you know what I mean? there, there's a, a couple good songs on it, but as a whole, the album, I, I wouldn't say that it, it meets some of the earlier stuff. Right, so I'll see it in the used bin soon, I guess. <laughs> Maybe not your copy, but... Well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, your favorite album where you go. <laughs> your favorite album of all time. Um, it's The Clash and London Calling. Uh, London Calling. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, you know I, 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 I'm, I would, you know, I do love the first album. I do love um, Sandinista, and I do love um, Combat Rock. But I think that London Calling has really the full breadth of the Clash. So you have a little bit of all the different parts. Right. And um, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, if it, I had to have one, that, it's that it's stayed with as me. their best album. I, yeah. I mean, one of the best albums of all time. So. Yep. Yeah, you can't go wrong. How about uh, your least favorite or most disappointing album? So going back to Eric, I, I gave him uh, an album back in the day, and it was a camper Van Beethoven, Van Beethoven and, um, and I can't remember the name of it. Key Lime Pie. Key Lime Pie. Yeah. Thank you. It was their last Matt album Stick before. Man. Yeah, pictures yeah. of Matt yeah, Stickman. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 And, you know, I, I'm a big Cracker fan. I was a big Uncle Tupelo fan. I, I, I love the genre. I just couldn't get into that album. Yeah. So I gave it a try, and then I just handed it to him. He had allowed me to borrow his Iris Dement CD. I still have that CD. Wow. And you still listen to it. I got a draft pick out of it, too. Yeah. <laughs> so it was a draft pick and Iris for the camper. Well, I have to say, Camper Band Beethoven, the Key Lime Pie Tour came to Metropole in 89. <laughs> And it was probably one of my favorite concerts of all time. <laughs> there you so, go. Yeah. yeah it's, you know, yeah, but maybe if I listened to it again, I'd feel differently about it. But having given it a lot of listens back then, it just wasn't. Uh, it just wasn't the. It the, wasn't. I remember yeah. around that same time, there was a band out of Buffalo called the Steam Donkeys, and I <laughs> saw them in uh, uh, graffiti, and I loved them, and I bought their tape. And the only reason I tell you this is that I listened to that tape all the time, and then my car was stolen, and by uh, and during the. Uh, the mid 90s, 95, by one of the gangs that was fighting in Pittsburgh, used in a drive by shooting. But that tape was one of the only things that I couldn't find after I got it back, and I'm sure it went out the window. Yeah, right. Yeah, it was <laughs> yeah. In, right. yeah they were probably. Yeah. Out. It's <laughs> like, <laughs> what is that? Yeah, the Steve Donkey. Is that yep. great? Yep. Uh, your first concert you ever went to? Uh, that would have been with my brother Tom, who was also the same brother that got me the Monkees album, and my buddy Rick Chadwick, and it was 1977, 78, 78, 78 Civic Arena, uh, Eddie Money opening up for Boston. Boston. Yep. And Boston just came out, uh, seven, their second album. Yes, yeah. exactly. Tom Schultz, and the, you know, and the whole gigantic organ yeah. that would come up out of the stage, and... Uh, 
During that first set, uh, Eddie Money's drummer almost impaled my brother with a broken drumstick. I still have that drumstick. What is it somewhere? Or no, it's not Eddie, anywhere. Eddie, in, it's, yeah. it's still at my mom's house, in fact, like in some shoebox, but with about four guitar picks from Rick Nielsen from the 70s and nice. 80s uh, Cheap Trick concerts. Awesome. And the last concert you went to? Um, I didn't get a chance to get out late this summer. I've been away for a, a good part of it. So the last show would have been the YEP show up at Shenley Plaza with the Martin Sexton. Summer Music Festival. Summer Music yeah. Festival. And I got to meet Martin as well. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of a cool night. Yeah. Not, and you, you're a fan of him? Yeah. 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 And um, a great concert. Uh, I wish I could remember the name of the band that opened. Uh, those are always great They're shows. from New York, and they were amazing, too. It was a really good lineup that they yeah. had. Yeah, they always do. Yep. A great job. Uh, your favorite concert of all time? Uh, it would have been the Grateful Dead in the 80s, uh, where the Neville brothers were playing in Pittsburgh and thought it would be a great idea to go down and see the Dead for the second set, and they brought them on stage, and it was one of the greatest sets of any Grateful Dead concert I've ever heard in my life and the entire place was just jumping. Yeah, I was there and it, it was in the midst of that Dylan Dead yeah. run of shows, yeah. so everybody was expecting, oh, maybe Dylan's going to show up, this is going to be great, and then the Neville show up and they just killed it. So I went to the um, Tom Petty Dylan Dead show in D.C. Okay, I went, 86. The, I went to the Akron Rubber Bowl. Okay, yeah, yeah and that yeah. was, I remember we were up in New York and it was Lady Liberty's 200, or the 100th anniversary and then we came down to see that show in D.C. and uh, that was a good show, it was a good, but it, there was just something that was electric not that there wasn't something electric in every Grateful Dead show, right. but there was something how, even how, more. How many have you seen? Uh, 15. Well, okay. I, I was at 15 shows. I think I got into 13, I think. <laughs> it was close. <laughs> I saw 30. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, in, yeah. in 10 years. Yeah. The 85 show at the arena and yeah. the 95 show at the stadium. Yeah, me too. So, That's, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 84 was my first. That was at the arena. Okay. And then uh, the 95 was yeah, the last. Yeah, yeah. cool. Uh, your least favorite concert of all time? Or most disappointing? Um, I, I remember a double date in the 80s uh, at the arena where the Thompson Twins were playing. And I'd have to look. I think they were playing with Wang Chung. Uh, <laughs> but the, one of the twins, uh, the, the guy who played drums, was playing bongos. But he spent half the show passed out on them. <laughs> and there was a musical tape that was being played that had a you percussion mean. that just wasn't there. Yeah, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, two out of three twins. Right, right. And uh, any favorite thoughts or experiences about Pittsburgh? Uh, I love everything about Pittsburgh. I mean, it's you know when people ask what is the what's your favorite thing, it's always uh, I think the standby that most Pittsburghers say it's their family and their friends. Mm -hmm. We're fortunate that now not a lot of them have to leave. Right, they can actually stay here. Uh, there's a guy who does uh, amazing Pittsburgh paintings named Corey Bonnet, and he said, what do you think of when you think of Pittsburgh? And I'm like, neighborhoods, hills, rivers, churches, bridges, downtown, trees. And he stood up on the top of a convent in Spring Hill, looking over Troy Hill, down over the Strip District, hmm. to the Hill District, all the way to Polish Hill. And he drew this beautiful painting of all the houses on all these hills, in the river, in the Heinz plant, in the cork factory, and downtown, and it sort of catches all that quintessential part of it. Wow. So that's in my office. Nice. Well, I so appreciate you coming Man, here. It's good to see you, buddy. Yeah, yeah. good to see you. And Thank thanks you so for much, helping Bill. to promote Pittsburgh musicians and artists. It's my pleasure, believe me. So right now, we are going to hear once again from Meeting of Important People, fellas. <laughs> We're going to be joined by some friends of ours as Meeting of Important People take us out with their latest single, which was released on Wild Kindness Records, a flexi vinyl called All Rode Off Together.
give a long embrace and then you're all for so much for tuning in. I want to thank Meeting of Important People, Mayor Bill Peduto, all our wonderful friends for participating. Thank you. I want to thank Jay Vega from the Wilderness Recording Studio, James Street Gastro Pub and Speakeasy, all the wonderful people here at PCTV. Thank you so much, Carl. Thank you so much, Eric. John, thank you so much. And please, everybody, always remember to support Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Music! music.
We're good.